everyone. So I'm Elizabeth. I'm going to be um, teaching the next workshop. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. So just kind of settle in and we'll start in like a couple minutes. Awesome. So I guess I'm going to get started. So thank you guys so, so much for coming today. And um, thank you for Girl Genius for asking me to teach this workshop. Like you guys are awesome for coming out and like making the most out of these trying times. I know it's been very chaotic. So really appreciate you guys coming in. Um, but yeah, so this workshop is really cool. And I'm gonna cover like the current state of AR VR and like what is what are all these terms like thrown around. Um, and yeah, I wanna cover just like what popular applications there are now. And also I wanna give you guys some tools and tips into how you can start creating in this space. Um, so my goal of this presentation is to not like overwhelm you with like tons of tons of things. I just want you guys to just have like a holistic springboard on where to start. So uh, let's get started. So just a little bit about me. I'm a rising junior studying EE at Stanford. And so why I kind of wanted to choose EE is that I've always been interested in like working with my hands, but also like working, like just building things. And yeah, so I got to Stanford and I tried VR for the first time and I was like, oh my God, what is this cool headset thing? So it kind of like sparked my interest in like devices. Um, and yeah, so I'm very interested in medical devices and also design. So that's why I like this XR space is really appealing. So XR is like AR, VR. Um, I'll like throw around that term sometimes. So yeah, so that's kind of my background. And I'm currently interning as a product manager um, in AR and VR at Unity. So for you guys who don't know Unity, Unity is a game engine and they power about 60% of today's like AR VR content. So yeah, it's a really cool place to work. Um, and yeah, loving it so far. So some more things about me. I really love classical music. Um, this is a picture of my orchestra. We went to Carnegie Hall and that was like super fun. I've been playing for a while, um, viola and violin. So I really love music. And at university, I'm really involved in um, acapella. So that's something I um, got involved with. And finally, I'm really involved in Stanford XR. So I help lead the organization there. And what we do is support anyone who's interested in AR, VR. And yeah, we set up a lot of cool community events. Um, and yeah, we hold like a, a conference every year. So bringing together um, the best minds um, and just, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So that's kind of my background. Um, now I wanna show you guys some projects that I've been working on or have worked on. So this is a Tai Chi slash, oh, sorry. This is a Tai Chi slash meditation app. So what the goal is for this is, so you're in VR, right? Totally immersive. You are kind of guiding or being guided by these balls that you have to touch, right? And it kind of guides you to do relaxing movements. So this is like my first project ever in VR and I worked on a team of like five of my good friends. Um, so yeah, super fun. So that was like my first like intro to VR. Um, and then this is a project that I worked on last summer in the Stanford Medical School. So the goal of this was here, I'll play the video. The goal of this was to create a kidney transplant viewer for um, transplant surgeons. So before they go into the operating room, they want to know where are the veins wrapped around the kidney? What are the risks of this surgery? Um, there's a lot of complications that might go awry. So I worked with a couple of doctors to produce this viewer that's made up of MRI scan data. So all of these kidneys you see are like real patient data. and. So as you can see, like in the application, I can like zoom in the structure, turn some structures on and off. Um, and yeah, so I worked with about like, 70 patient cases 
um, and like all from the creation of the 3D models to like the creation of this viewer. Um, and I'm using the HoloLens. So I'll talk more about the HoloLens later, but yeah, it's just like a headset um, that is created by Microsoft. And then lastly, this is the final project. So this was a hackathon project that I did with another friend. And so basically the goal was to train or to help people who went through stroke and guiding them through um, like an opening and a closing hand um, like exercise. Um, so this is really fun. We have never done AR mobile development. So this was like our first uh, time doing it. it was super fun. And yeah, we like basically trained like an ML model to like see if your hand was like open or closed by taking pictures of our hands. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. And yeah, so these are the projects that I've done kind of in the past. So now I want to kind of like explain like what's the hype between all of this? I know like in the past is like, okay, when is VR actually going to happen? Like when is it gonna be mainstream and that kind of stuff? So I think of AR and VR as world building. So I love it because you're able to change how you see the world and how other people see the world. So, and I believe that, so, for example, like the progression of technology, right? Like we had the computer, right? That was super big. We have mobile, right? So I think like the next step is to kind of create spatially, right? So if you can imagine like interacting with like things like, and you see it through a headset. So I think like, this is like the next wave of the future. Um, and yeah, it's super exciting stuff. So that's kind of why I'm involved with it. Um, and then, yeah, so we just go on. So then why now? I feel like you guys are in a perfect position to get involved with this field um, because there's so much happening in the space right now. Like the big tech companies are investing millions and millions of dollars into creating the best new headsets. Um, and yeah, like there are just so many apps that are being created now. Um, and yeah, I feel like AR VR hasn't really hit its peak yet. So before that peak hits, like you guys are kind of like taking the next step and like trying to get involved. And I think that's really cool. Um, so yeah, right now is the best time. And also the demand for jobs in this field, super high. Like when I saw this stat, I was like amazed, but like apparently 1400% um, growth for AR VR engineers. So yeah, like, <laughs> I guess that's like another reason why, like, why not pick up a few skills in this space, like when we're all at home, right, because of, you know, COVID and other things. So, yeah. Anyways, yeah, let's get started. So for, um, now I want to talk a little bit about like each category of like, I guess, like popular terms. So virtual reality is like the typical box on the head type thing, right? So you have this headset, you put on your face, right? You can't see <laughs> anything except for what's presented like in the box, right? So it's completely immersive. And so this is like what people think about like when they hear like, I guess, like virtual reality, that kind of stuff, right? So Oops. So I want to talk a little bit about the hardware. So on the left, we have like the Quest. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but it's like one of the most popular headsets being sold right now. Um, and it's really cool because it doesn't have a cord, so it's untethered. So what that means is like you don't have to plug it into a computer. It's just like its own device. Um, so the other two headsets, so the one in the middle is a Sony PlayStation headset, also super popular. And then the Vive on the right is also really popular. And these are tethered, meaning they have a cord out of them, but they're still really powerful. Um, so yeah, if you guys are like interested in like picking up a headset, like these three, I guess, headsets are the ones that are most popular. And yeah, I think it's pretty easy to develop on either one of them, um, but yeah. So now we're gonna go on to AR. So just kind of like, I want to see or get like a kind of poll about like who know, like who has like experienced AR just like I guess like type in the chat if you guys have like 
experience AR, Pokemon Go, or something of that sort. Awesome. Sweet. That is super cool. It's awesome to see that. Oh, nice. Someone made an Instagram filter. Cool, cool. Awesome. So also how many people, well, I guess you guys don't have to say, but like, I guess how many people use like Snapchat and whatever? Yeah, right. Basically almost all of us, right? <laughs> so I don't know if it's like popular knowledge, um, but like Snapchat is also like a super popular use case of AR. Um, I started using Snapchat like in high school and I didn't really like know that I was, this is AR, you know, but it's really cool. Like you can design like your own filters and I can go into that later. Like there are, there are programs which you can do that it's super easy to get involved. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Spark AR. <laughs> Good stuff. So yeah. So this is Pokemon Go, super popular. Um, and yeah, so let's go on to hardware. So I put a question mark here <laughs> because there actually isn't like hardware or like a headset out right now, which is exciting because when it does come out, like there's gonna be a huge wave of content that we can actually like experience, right? So right at the moment, um, like a AR headset is being developed, like, it's rumored that Apple is going to release in a couple years. Um, in the picture, this is like Unreal's headset, and there isn't a headset that's like consumer usage right now. So this is kind of why, like again, like it's a great time to get involved now because we still don't have the optimal hardware. So yeah, it's all in the future, hopefully in a couple of years. Okay, and then the last category. So this is MR, which is mixed reality. I know there's so many terms. <laughs> so how I like to think of MR is like, it's AR, but a little better, like spiced up a little bit more. So AR is like, you kind of impose a picture, right? In your surroundings, right? You could still see your reality. But MR is like the same thing, but we want to like integrate that experience like with your surroundings. So it's the experience is spatially aware. So say if you have like an object or like a table, like the experience or like that object will know that it's there and will like kind of scan the room and like figure that out. So I just think of MR as like smarter AR. So really cool stuff. And then the HoloLens. So the thing that I developed with the kidney viewer, um, so that's me on the right. <laughs> and like, I'm wearing like a HoloLens. And so this is like hardware for MR. Um, the HoloLens isn't like super consumer ready yet, but it's really expensive right now. But hopefully in the future, MR is going to be more available. So yeah, sorry for throwing all those terms at you. Um, but what I'm trying to get at is like, this is the whole ecosystem of like the whole like reality, mixed reality kind of stuff. So it falls under the category of like XR and XR is like the umbrella term for like I guess, um, <laughs> for like all of this encompassed. And so it's like a term that's like not super popular now, but it's catching on in industry. So like, yeah, you guys are, <laughs> you guys know what XR means now. So if I throw around the term XR, it just means everything, right? Cool. So those are basically like all the terms that I'm gonna throw at you. So you guys have <laughs> experienced probably the worst part <laughs> of the workshop. So now let's talk a little about, about industry application. So it's hard for me to like, it was hard for me to come up with a slide because there's just so many applications. Like I just had to condense it, but some examples. So like the chariot program on the left, like this is a really cool org. They work within the Stanford Children's Hospital and they, create VR experiences that can ease pain um, and like for children who are about to go in the operating room to calm them down um, and yeah just to help with rehab I know they have work on some mobility VR applications so like just really cool medical applications um, within that org so it's a lot of stuff you can do in the med space um, and then in the in the middle there's this Gucci app right and this is AR and you can try on these shoes so I thought that was really cool um, it's available now if you want to try it out and yeah so like especially during these times where things are more virtualized like I think augmented reality shopping like will be very interesting you know like trying on things especially when it's hard to get to a store and then on the right 
just classic example of gaming, right? Pokemon Go. Go. Um, and yeah, so those are some industry applications. Like I said, this is like not exhaustive. There's so much more you can do out there. Um, so yeah, not just these three kind of categories. So now I wanna talk a little bit about how to get involved, right? Like, like we all like in this space, like we need all sorts of creators, right? We need artists, we need like musicians, we need coders, right? And we need people who know people, right? Like these, these interactions are so new, like, you know, VR, that kind of stuff. Like it takes like a wide variety of skill sets to actually create in this space. So what I'm trying to get at here is like, don't be afraid if like, oh, like I can't code, like, I don't know if I can create in this space. Like, there are tons of applications that probably don't even require you to like type a bit of code if you don't want to do that. But there are also applications in which you can make it code. Like, don't be afraid. And honestly, like I came to Stanford, came to college, didn't know how to code, um, just tried some tutorials in Unity and that's kind of where I started. So now I want to walk you guys through some like tools to help you guys like get started. So, I started learning on Unity, um, a little biased because I guess I like I work here now, but <laughs> I really think Unity is a great tool um, to help you get started. And they actually started this program called Unity Learn. Um, so they made it free for, um, for circumstances during like COVID, but like it's free indefinitely, I think. And what it is, is just like a bunch of tutorials to help you guys start learning and creating content. Um, and yeah, like I said, again, Unity produces most of the XR content, so it's a very widely used platform. I love it just because if I have a problem, right, I Google it and there's at least someone else who had the same problem. So it's not like you're one of the few people using this platform. There's like a lot of help um, documentation like waiting for you. Okay. And then the complicated picture on the right, don't really worry about it. What I'm trying to get at here is that if you can see on the bottom level here, like this SDK area. So Unity integrates all sorts of plugins and this seems cool, right? But it's actually fantastic because when you're building for like the quests, when you're building for like the vibe, right? Like they have their own plugins with their hardware, but Unity's engine kind of encapsulates that all. So when you produce content, you don't need to worry about what hardware it works with. It takes care of that already. So like you can deliver content to as many people as like as possible. So cross-platform integration is like key, right? We want to get our content out there, right? So that's really why like Unity just takes care of it for you. And so like Unity is one great tool, but there's also like a ton of other tools. Um, I know you guys already talked about like using Lens Studio and all that stuff. So Unreal Engine is another big game engine, super great. Um, yeah, so I haven't used it personally, but I'm sure the engine's awesome. And then AR Studio, I believe is Facebook's um, like Instagram, like content creation. And then Lens Studio is for Snapchat. So yeah, like these, Pro, or like these platforms are super easy to get started in. And I think like I was playing around with some of it. Like you don't even need to really touch any code and it's very like visual and intuitive. So you guys want to start creating just like a Snapchat lens or something like that. Like these um, for like Instagram and stuff like that, like these tools really help. So AR Studio and Lens Studio. So highly, highly recommend. Yeah. Cool. And then also, so these are some 3D tools that um, I kind of know about. So if you guys are interested in like art, if you guys are interested in, um, I guess, like 3D modeling, like these tools will really help. Um, so I've used Blender. Blender is a free tool um, and it's really, really great. And Maya is not free, but I know it's very powerful. So really good for 3D modeling. Um, but yeah, these are the tools that will help you get started. Um, there's lots of tutorials like online for Blender. Um, I've gone through a few of them. <laughs> and yeah, so um, I know a lot of people who are super talented, like 3D modelers. So like, 
like I said, I'm going to echo the same point. Like if you don't want to code, like, don't worry. Like it's okay. <laughs> like there's like t- so many different, I guess, like ways to get involved with the space without even needing to like get into the nitty gritty, like coding or whatnot, if that's not your cup of tea, but if it is, that's awesome too. Great. So now I just like want to go through some, like, I guess, like points on how to get started in like creating like some sort of application. It's very like high level. Um, it's something that I kind of learned at some um, design classes I took. So we want to start off with, right, like we want to identify a need and a problem, right? So why this is super important for the space, um, there's like a pretty big barrier to entry. And what I mean by this is like, you want your experience to create enough value so the person is gonna put on a headset, right? Or like open up an app on their phone, right? Like if the experience isn't good enough, like the person won't like go through that extra effort, right? So we wanna create, like we wanna have a need or a problem to solve that actually adds like value, right? Especially with these new fields that like the tech isn't like 100% there yet, right? Okay. And then next, like, we want to map out a solution to this problem that we've identified, right? So especially with XR, it gets a little tricky because some interactions, like say typing, right? Typing, oh my gosh, in virtual reality is probably the hardest thing, one of the hardest things to do, right? Like I've created like a bunch of keyboards and people are just like, what is this? I can't use this. So it's like very tough to create some like, simple UI UX elements in VR, like as you would think, but it's actually not just because like how you hold the hand controller, like it's gonna allow you to like press a button, like things that we don't normally think about, like it becomes a huge like design problem in this space. So I really recommend you guys to like map out a clear solution and walk out like step-by-step like like what is the user interaction going to be like from the start, like from the the time they open their app to the end, like what is that process going to be like? And I guess like, how are you going to like walk them through without them giving up? Um, Like another thing that I see a lot with these applications is like, if people, it's kind of like a game, right? If it's too hard, people are not going to like want to use the game or keep playing. So Likewise, if the interaction in VR and AR is too hard for them to get, they're not going to use it. So making things as clear and as like easy to use as possible is like, I think the goal of like creating. And so it'll really help if you have like a clear solution. And then like the next thing is like user test, right? I'm sure you guys like have kind of like heard like the whole like testing thing. And so like when you create something, you want to test it out with a bunch of people, right? Makes sense. Um, And it's really important to kind of do this in the space as well, because one person will be able to like, oh, like get this button interaction quicker than another person, right? So we want to make sure like as many people as possible will be able to use our application. So that's why you have to go through multiple rounds of like user testing sometimes. Um, Yeah. And so when you user test, you want to go back to your solution and maybe even your need or your problem if like that isn't super clear. So it's just a very reiterative process of just like going back to like step one or step two. And then just like doing it again and again till you really have a solid application. Yeah. And then last point is reiterate as I talked about. So yeah, um, so this kind of applies more towards if you're trying to like release your application to like a lot of people, but it can also definitely help you guys um, start thinking about what kind of things you want to create. But yeah, so hopefully this helps. And then also, this is a new space, right? Um, There are some dangers to the technology. I wouldn't say like dangers, but just like, I guess like some of you have probably heard like VR can create eye strain and can make people nauseous and motion sick depending on like what they do in VR. Um, 
So just like any new space, just like be kind of cautious about these things and yeah, keep that in mind. So I'll talk a little bit about like some goals. So because of like the new technology and everything, we want to like produce the most comfortable experiences, right? That actually create value. Like what's going to what's going to actually warrant someone to put on their headset and like, like do something right. And then we also want our experiences to work cross platform, right? We want to be able to deploy this thing on as many um, devices, as many headsets as possible. Right. Um, the next point, like, yeah, don't require like nauseating movement. So one thing um, in VR is a little tough is like, how's like an avatar or how is the player gonna move? Um, just because you're gonna be like moving in the space, right? And like most people play in like a kind of like smaller space. So like a lot of people have tried like trans like teleportation um, mood, like kind of moves and that works pretty well. Um, just be careful on like how you do the movement because like if you're like teleporting like super fast, like it might work, but also like might cause people to get nauseous. So this is like kind of the whole like comfortable experience type thing. And then also the last point is like shorter experiences. So what I mean by this is like, so say like we are using AR, right? And you are using like it on your phone or your iPad, right? So like it can be like pretty tiring to hold your phone up like to like look at something for like a couple hours, right? It can be tiring. And so that's why like for mobile, but also for virtual reality too with headsets, like you wanna have experiences that might not um, be too long because it's hard to spend a long time in a headset um, depending on like the person and their comfort level. But yeah, so I guess, um, so just like shorter bite-sized experiences, depending on like what you plan to use as your platform. Yeah. So yeah, now go get started. Um, I didn't really have too much in terms of slides. So like, feel free to ask me any questions now, um, but you can always reach me at this email address. Like I love talking about the stuff. So like, feel free to just shoot me an email. Um, I'll be happy to answer your questions if you're interested on like one like field or like, like don't know how to start in one area, like would be happy to help. And yeah, and also you can join our Slack channel for the org. Uh, it's just like hashtag Stanford XR if you guys are into Slack. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of my whole slides. Um, but yeah. Thank you guys so much. Um, yeah. I have a question and um, how you can integrate a Unity project into an application? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a really good idea. So um, what type of application are you thinking or are you trying to like, how do you integrate Unity with, um, or how do you, is the question like, how do you integrate like XR into Unity or? Um, yes, yes. Uh, how you can inter in integrate a unit project in a, into an application you development? Got it, got it. Yeah. So I think if I understand the question right, so what Unity um, has is a lot of built in packages. So if you want to start developing in XR, what you want to do is there's like like there's a lot of tutorials online, but I think what you do is you go to like the player settings and it's like a checkbox and you just say like, I want to enable VR or AR or whatever. You just like click that, um, you click that button and then they'll say like, okay, which headset or whatever you want to build for. Um, so I think you just go into the project itself after downloading Unity and then you can just like check a box and then Unity takes care of the whole like, um, the whole ecosystem. But yeah. Thanks. Cool. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So I see some questions in the chat. Were you interested in AR, VR at the start of college? So yeah, I didn't really know what VR, AR was before college. So I started um, and actually like I came to like a mixer at um, this org that I, I was a part of, right? Stanford XR. And I tried the headset for the first time and I was like, this is so cool. So I kind of just like slowly got more invested in this community and then in like 
um, just developing. So now I like take a lot of classes in XR and I've structured my education basically around it. So it's kind of funny how like deeply I'm in it now <laughs> compared to like, I think I came into college as probably like a psych major question mark. <laughs> so yeah, things can change a lot. But yeah, um, repeat the tools I mentioned for AR, VR. Yeah, so Unity is really great for just like building cross platforms. Um, and then Unreal is also a really good game engine. Um, and then the other tools I can actually like, well, the other tools I mentioned, so for Snapchat, it's Lens Studio, I believe. And then for Facebook and Instagram, I think it's called AR Studio. Um, so those are the tools kind of in the, the space, but I'm sure there's like or more tools. It's just like, those are like the ones that I, I know of and the, I guess the key ones. Um, but yeah. Can I ask what, a question? Oh yeah, go for it. Yeah. When, um, so I had two questions. The first one was, what is the difference? Like what, dif what differentiates VR, AR and MR? Like what gives it the reason that they have different names? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a really good question. So, so I like to think of VR as like, you can't see, like, say if I'm like going to put on a headset, right? Mm -hmm. I can't see anything around me, right? Everything is, everything that I see is being controlled or like being given to me by the headset. So it's like totally immersive. And then AR is like, I can actually see um, my surroundings. So AR is like an overlay. So it's like Snapchat, right? Like I have a face, I just overlay it, right? So that's AR. And then mixed reality, so MR is pretty similar to AR, right? We have our reality, but it's just like more spatially aware. So it's like AR that can like interact with like your table or like it knows that you're there. So it's gonna like, like for example, there's this really cool application in like the HoloLens where like I can like open my hand and there's like a hummingbird, right? That flies onto my hand. So MR like will know that my hand is there and it's like more spatially aware. Does that make sense? Yes, um, I have another question. Yeah, of course. So for um, studying AR and like all this reality in college, so if I wanted to major in computer science, do I have to do an, a minor in another subject to study this? And is there a job outlook for AR and all of this? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a really good question. So it's interesting, right? There isn't like a major to study this, right? Um, but there are like, so I'm studying electrical engineering um, just because like, I'm like kind of interested in the hardware component. Um, but I think like, if you want a major in um, like computer science, it's also great because it gives you a background in like coding and like a foundation for that. So I don't, I can't say there's like a specific major, but um, a lot of my friends at Stanford actually, um, some of them actually created their own majors, which is really interesting. So you, they focused it around like immersive design. So kind of focusing around XR, um, but I'd say like, you can still major in like CS, you can still major in like EE. Well, like there's so many majors that you can do. And I have another friend who is interested in the space and she like, I think she majored in like human biology. So there's like really no like set thing you want to major in, but just like what kind of things, like what kind of tools do you want to have like at the end of graduation, right? Like what is the end goal and like what major will best set you up to do it, right? Like it's just like the tool sets, right? I don't think there's like a specific major you can have. Um, and then I guess the next point, like how is like the job outlook? I think it's pretty good. So like for me at least, um, I wouldn't have gotten this internship if COVID didn't happen, which is like a really strange thing to say, but like Unity because the gaming industry is doing really well, like they open more spots for positions, right? So it just like goes to say that like, this space is doing pretty well. And I'd say like, so my job like at Unity is to do a lot of market research for XR and like predict like five years out, like what is it gonna look like in the space? So I've done like some, like some analysis and it seems to like be growing. And especially like when like AR glasses come out and like better tech comes out, it's just gonna further like help in this space, right? Like. 
like my mentor talks about like two big bottlenecks, right? It's like the lack of hardware and the lack of content, right? So if we have better hardware, we can produce more content and then we can just have more people getting involved. So I think it's going to just keep going like bigger and bigger as the time goes on. Okay, thank you. Yeah, of course. Can I, I have ask a question? question? Yeah. I yeah. Have I'm a going question. to study software engineering. Awesome. But if I want to to learn more about XR, do I have to take an specialty or something like that? Some course or what do I have to, to do? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a good, good, good question. That's awesome that you're studying. Um, so I think it really depends on if your school has like um, like a class in it. I would like, so for me, I guess like I started getting involved with like game development. So my school has like a couple of like game dev classes that taught me how to use Unity. Um, and also our club offers like an intro to Unity class. So I'd say like whatever school you're going to, if you're interested in the space, like I totally like recommend just like looking up classes like in game dev, if they don't have like a specific XR class um, and then getting involved with that. And like, if it, if your school doesn't have it, like there's so many, there's so many people that I know that have just learned XR kind of like on their own, um, like through tutorials or just like by Googling, um, so like if there isn't a course, like you, I'm sure you can still like learn on your own and there's like so many tutorials out there. So yeah, like I feel like the space right now is it's a good time to get involved. So yeah. Thank you. And yeah. another thing, mm -hmm. uh, can you please send the link to join to the Slack channel, please? Oh, yes. Um, I think what you can do is I think I think you can like just I think type it in and then it'll come up and then we approve of the like request. I think that's how it works. So you just type in like Stanford XR and I think it should work like when you're searching like in Slack. Oh, um, cool. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, of course. Yeah, sorry I didn't put a link there, but yeah. We have a question. Yeah. Sorry, and how do I start to learn a year? I'm 11 years old. Oh, wow. Oh, it's so awesome that you're so interested in your, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, for AR, I think like, so there's like, so the tools that like AR studio and AR lens, I guess it depends on like what type of application you want to build. So say you want to build like, like a more fleshed out AR game, then I would probably recommend Unity. But if you're trying to just like have like a like an intro and you want to develop like maybe a lens or something like super like small and lightweight um, and not like super like intense, like a full fledged game, then I would recommend like maybe AR um, Studio or like Lens Studio. But yeah, no, it, that's really cool that you want to get involved. Um, and yeah, so best of luck. Like I, I recommend those. Um, those things, those tools there. And yeah, good luck. That's awesome. I have a question. Thank you very much for, yeah. mm -hmm. for the tip. Oh, um, hi. I was wondering what extracurriculars you did to show your passion for engineering and things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's a really good question. Um, so I didn't do, well, are you talking about in high school or are you talking about in college or? Um, both is fine, but mostly towards high school. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. So in high school, I didn't really know what XR is. I didn't do anything with that. I didn't even do any programming. So I guess I can talk a little bit more like about general engineering. So in high school, I think I did, I did a lot of, um, what is it? I tried to take a lot of, like I was really involved in like chemistry at my high school. So I I did like chem bowl, which is like kind of quiz bowl, but like chem style. And then I did like a bunch of like competitions, I guess, in chemistry that were just like really fun. Um, and I did teams. I don't know if you know what teams is, but it's like, um, I kind of like, like it, group of eight students and they go through like different challenges so it's like 
like a multiple choice challenge on different topics, like a written challenge, like you have to make an essay and like a build challenge. So then you have to like, out of X materials, create something that fulfills a goal, right? So that competition was super fun and I got really involved. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I did a lot of that and I did a lot of music. So um, I think, yeah, I think those are the things that kind of were more engineering related. I don't know if that helps, but yeah. <laughs> No, that's great thank you so much of course of course yeah I, I would just say like whatever you're passionate about it's like so much easier to just do that so it kind of like fuels you to like just spend more time in it so whatever you want to do you should totally do it I have a question yeah for sure um what is the coding language to learn earlier to start with VR virtual reality yeah because you say it's so difficult so what is the coding language to learn? Yeah, so um, no, that's a really good question. So um, I didn't really want to talk too much about like overwhelm you guys with like the coding and like the SDKs like within the presentation. Um, if you want to get started, Unity uses C Sharp um, specifically to develop. And I think Unreal Engine uses C++. So um, yeah, so C Sharp is the language for Unity, and I believe um, if you want to code your own um, like full-fledged AR application, you can use Unity, um, and they have like what kind of the developer kit is called is like AR kit is for Apple, and then AR core is for all Android devices. So those are the two like developer platforms um within the space oh. but unity kind of handles um the sdk for you but yeah i don't know if that answers your question but yeah i'd say like c sharp if you want to get involved with unity thank you so much yeah, of course um also about programming languages uh, so, um, go ahead yeah i i heard from other event in the girls girls just copies um is the easiest and the first um, programming that you start with. I've also heard um, there people that should start with Python. Is that the easy, easiest? So which one do I start with? That's a super good question. Um, yeah, so kind of tie back to the thing that I was gonna say, like once you learn like a programming language, like it will be easy to learn other programming languages. So getting started is always the hardest part. Um, so like what I started on was Java and that was just kind of like the intro course at Stanford. Um, so yeah, I got to start with Java, but I think they changed the curriculum now to start with Python. And I think Python is like a good starter language because it's more intuitive to use just because it is less like computery code and it's more like um like words like english that you can understand so i think python's a good way to get started in terms of coding um java was also um it was also a good starting point so uh, yeah it really depends but i i think i'd recommend those two languages um but yeah it i don't think you could go wrong either way it's just like there's like just pros and cons to where you start for each but yeah Okay, so you showed a graph about the demand growth for engineering roles. Does that mean that the first roles, like who, who are in the top chart, are the ones who are going to have more job opportunities in the future? I think it's just, so I kind of show that there to just kind of, I guess, like have, I don't know, it's, that's a good question. I think for that specific year of 2019, yes, there was a lot of growth for AR VR, but it doesn't mean that, I guess, like there isn't gonna be growth in like, say computer learning or whatever. Um, like there's just like different areas that are still like seeing growth. So it doesn't mean like you should, like you shouldn't follow these other uh, fields, but it's just like for that particular like, year it was like super big growth um but i do think this field is going to boom pretty quickly once we see more tech so i think there will be more jobs just because there's going to be a need for creators and content and just like more things right like when the phone came out like the app store boomed right there's just so many apps that are like 
in the ecosystem now. So like, I think there's just going to be more demand, but doesn't mean you shouldn't like, like pursue other things because like, I feel like the whole ecosystem is booming. Um, and I think there are other fields that are growing like super big. So that's, I don't know if that helps, but I think that's kind of what I think about the space. It's okay. Thank you. Um, how can f students find internships or print? Okay. Yeah. So it's so funny. Like <laughs> when I applied, I basically looked up like AR, VR jobs and I just like applied to all of them. <laughs> so like, I think it's, it's definitely a more niche space. So I think growth is happening, but how I kind of, um, I guess like applied for jobs is like through other people I knew, but also like job postings online. So um, I'd say, yeah, just like search online, but also if you have like any friends, like I like, I think using like your connections with people is like a super strong approach just because they can tell you like, hey, this job was great. I loved it here. And like, I can refer you blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, definitely I would reach out to people that I know first, and then I would just kind of do an exhaustive like Google search. Um, and then for jobs fairs, I don't think there's any specific ones happening. That'd be cool to see though. Like that's a great idea actually for <laughs> our club. But like, I think, I think like within tech job fairs, you can probably find a couple of them here and there, but like I kind of apply to a bunch of roles just through their website. So if you're interested in working at say like, um, like Microsoft, I would just apply on the website too. Um, but yeah, but definitely knowing a recruiter also helps. So you can also like DM people on LinkedIn, which is actually like pretty effective. So I would just kind of like use like that person to person contact like as much as possible. So yeah, I can definitely get you like through doors and such like that. Thank yeah. You so much for yeah. The question. Of course. Yeah. Any other questions? Hi. Um I was wondering if you could talk more about the kidney project you worked on. Like yeah. how were you able to translate that patient data into a 3D model? Yeah. No, that's I'd love to talk about it. Yeah, that's a really good question. So these um, these scans, right, started off as MRIs. And so kind of what my job was, I worked under a really talented radiologist. Um, his name is Bruce Daniel. Um, so he taught me how to basically take the MRI data and we use this open source um, software. I think it's called Horos. So H-O-R-O-S. And that just like, I uploaded the MRIs in there and then manually I would like kind of set like a pixel count and then say like a pixel count of 3000. And then the whole software created these 3D models for me. I just had to make sure that they looked good. Does that make sense? So I wasn't like I wasn't creating these 3D models by hand. That would just take so much time, but I used a software to help me create them. And then I like, just like did a quality check to see if they were um, visible and if they included like enough parts of the, the scan. And then from there, I exported those um, OBJ files. So like the, the 3D models, and then I uploaded it into Unity. And then I kind of just like, I would open the 3D model every time I would uh, go to a new case. So I don't know if that helps, but that's just kind of like my flow of data. So like MRI to uh, Horos and then 3D models and then Unity. Okay, um, how can we join the Slack group? Because yeah, sorry, I <laughs> I realized that you might need to be a part of the Stanford community. Um, we do have a Facebook group and yeah, so I think the Facebook group is pretty active um, and it's like the same name. And I do believe we have a LinkedIn page. Um, I'll have to check on that, but yeah, we definitely do have a Facebook. So just type in like Stanford XR. Um, and yeah, it's, yeah, I'm sorry you guys can't join the Slack. That's, I thought that it was open, but I guess it's like under the org or the under the university. Um, but yeah, and like, feel free if you want to get like more involved, like just, just message me and I can add you probably to like our mailing list or something like that. If you 
are interested in like learning more about the org or just like learning about like more about I guess like developing or like have any questions like would love to be connected like I love talking about the stuff and that's like I, I cannot say that more like I actually really love just like talking to people about the stuff so like just like reach out anytime and like yeah okay thank you so much no, of is it is the same name for the Facebook group yeah thanks yeah I was wondering if there was like more if you saw more growth in other areas of AR and VR other than than like video games in the future or near future yeah yeah no that's that's a really good question so how I like to think about this is like so first it kind of starts with games right I think like when computers were coming out right like kind of gaming kind of helped the technology be adopted right so I think there's a high demand for games right now just because there's a lot of passionate gamers out there using VR but that's not to say that there's going to be just gaming right like there's so many other fields that are growing right now. Like I didn't even know the lab that I worked under, like AR and medicine, like I didn't even know it existed. And it just formed about, I think like three, two years ago. So I think that's just like a key indication to see that like gaming is just like one slice of the pie, right? There's gonna be so many more applications. Um, for one instance, like um, job training, there's, already a very successful company, uh, Striver, doing job training for like, I think like Chipotle, Walmart, like I think gaming can have elements in other fields, but there's so many more applications, like so many more. And like, I probably didn't do a good job on just like that one slide, but like, there's just so many more. And I could talk for hours and hours about just like the different projects that I've seen and like the different industries that can use or are using actually XR right now. Like I'm pretty sure Porsche is using um, VR to just kind of design their cars. Um, there was an article, um, I think, yeah, I think there's so many companies like utilizing this um, technology. So it's being pretty used in um, commercial applications. Um, but yeah, so definitely gaming one slice of the pie, but like the future is like going to be pretty big and it's going to, I think this tech is going to kind of infuse like within different view fields and it already is. So yeah, if you're not like a huge gamer, like that's totally cool. Like, <laughs> like gaming is not going to be, um, it's not going to be the only thing for sure. All right. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank of course. You. Thank you guys. All oh, the feedback is so so great. <laughs> thank you for the informative oh. session. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, no, thank you guys for your awesome questions and like for staying for this workshop. I know it's been a long day, so appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. How do you join the Slack channel that's there? Um, so I think the Slack channel might be um, kind of like not open. So I would recommend joining the Facebook um, and just like type in Stanford XR and join the Facebook group. And then, like I said, like, please reach out to me at my email. And if you want, like, I can probably add you some like to some community events or things that we're doing um, because we do have an outreach program within our organization. So just like if you want, like, please, please shoot me an email and I can add you to like a like some kind of like probably email list. And then, yeah, you can be invited to some um, events. So, yeah. Oh, thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you guys so much for coming. You guys are awesome. And I hope it helped. And I hope you guys start building things, right? <laughs> We're kind of stuck indoors. So I feel like now is a great time to just like pop open a YouTube video, right? <laughs> Oh, thanks, guys. Yeah, no, I hope this helps like, at any way possible. So yeah, thank you guys for coming out. <laughs>